Well, it is Christmas in the summer after all. Wait, Christmas in July is a legit saying? Well, it is July. So, by now, it is no secret that game modes are doing pretty well. With TFT being turned into a separate game, with Arena keeping players around so much it got multiple runs, and with Swarm bringing back players who quit League entirely. It is clear that game modes have a massive value for League. The players who really enjoyed Star Guardians or Odyssey knew this for a while, with the best comparison ironically being uh, Fortnite. Sure, a lot of people moved on from that game, but if anything, everyone remembers the big event it can throw around. And up until now, a lot of players were sad, League kinda never got that. The thing is, after Riot gave this a try, not only did they realize this kind of experimentation can do wonders for League, but they also gave us a massive post, where they revealed what worked well, and more importantly, where they also tease what might be coming in the future. So without further ado, let's have a look at Riot's official post about game modes called Swarm, Arena and the value of game modes. The post begins by mentioning how we can currently fight the Swarm, how Pengu's party is going on in TFT and how a lot of people are grinding the Arena Master title. And that is all because the team is not afraid to juice up League's gameplay or to change it entirely. And they are ready to reveal their thoughts about it. So first we got a few words from Riot August, who is currently the head of the Swarm team. A value of game modes is that they create different ways to experience League of Legends. Some players are ranked grinders, other players love ARAM, and another group will prefer normals. League has this large and diverse player base. And modes are a great way to serve players who want different types of experiences. This is honestly true, and even the post mentions this. Over the last 15 years, even though there wasn't too many of them, game modes have covered a massive range of potential players. There were more casual game modes with Poroking and even Nexus Blitz potentially, but there were also more competitive game modes like Blood Moon or Singularity even though that one was silly too. So then Riot Cadmus chips in with a few words. Before we released Arena in 2023, we saw what our ecosystem looks like when not injecting new novel experiences for players. Players told us loud and clear that they were missing modes. During that time, we saw the need to provide new maps and gameplay spaces, to create experiences with unique hooks and rule sets that don't exist in League today. That has led us to investing in Arena with its small maps and creating Swarm, which is a whole new genre with a different control scheme. Now here we quickly need to mention something important. The reason why there was a big gap where League was simply not releasing any new game modes is because for a while there were no teams that would make those game modes. At first, League used to have a game modes team that was just making silly stuff, but then a part of it was moved onto Riot Forge, so a new team then took over and that team happened to make a uh, TFT, which became its own game, so that entire team was now the TFT team. Which means, after that, there were no more teams working on game modes, so Riot had to get entirely new devs and train them all. That's why it took a while before we started getting new game modes again. So it's not like Riot just decided not to make any for a while. And that is why some people are also afraid that Swarm or Arena gets separated. Because if it does and if it becomes permanent, it will have to have its own team. Anyway, then we get a few words from Riot Sobox, who is the product lead on Swarm. We look at game modes and we see a way for safe experimentation to push the envelope for what it means to have fun in League ecosystem. While we are not saying we are going to be pushing out R&D type games as foundations for modes, we are looking at ways we can keep improving modes over time. You see that with Arena right now. We send it out, saw where the players wanted to engage with the mode, then brought it back to the lab. Our goal is to get to the point where it's sustainable long term. So here you heard it. The plan is not to make more game modes that would eventually become separate games for Riot, 
but simply to refine the process to a degree where they can just push out more game modes. If by any chance the game modes become massive, then Riot would look into potentially making them a permanent thing. But again, that is not the ultimate goal. And after that, we get an interesting tease. When we're thinking of experimentation for League, we are envisioning more of Heimerdinger's measured risks and less of Singed's mad laboratory. As we release more modes, they also help us better understand what players want out of a League experience. You see, every time Riot is using these clever words, they are teasing something. They teased Aurora with a bunch of bunny puns. They teased Smolder by referencing a royal brood. And now I am pretty sure they are referencing Heimerdinger and Singed for a reason. And if you think about it, it makes sense. Arcane is right behind the corner. And guess what characters you can find in it. So this is likely a tease that League of Legends will get something for Arcane. Just like how two years ago we got the Chemtech and Hextech Drakes. Though here it is interesting to see that it's teased by the game modes team. Anyway, then we get to read about their learnings. Here it is mentioned that League originally started as a hyper-competitive game, but over time they learned about how diverse their player base really is. And what taught them about this the most was ARAM. So August continues. Way back in League's first few years, we learned a ton from ARAM. ARAM showed us there is a desire to play a League-like experience, but not on Summoner's Rift and not in a super competitive setting. It helps show that there is a wide range of how players want to engage with this game. Whether it's ARAM, normals, ranked or even spamming spells in Earth. That's right! ARAM has been part of the game for 11 years now. And it was always doing its best to hold the casual player base together. And interestingly enough, here it was confirmed that Wild Rift learned from this too. So next, after releasing a bunch of game modes of their own, including a fully PvE game mode based on lore, Riot Vegeta Bird, who is the product manager for Wild Rift, chips in. Game modes are important for two main reasons. One, they make a game feel alive with new content. And two, a game mode is a really great place to test out big changes. If we are thinking about altering something in Summoner's Rift, or if we want to switch up some core gameplay, we can test the impact of those changes in a low stakes game mode. This way we can figure out if this is a change we want to make to the game as a whole, and if we want more info on how it should be implemented. The interesting thing is that Wild Rift did this a few times in the past. And this summer they are doing it again. Previously they released game modes that were just Summoner's Rift but with new mechanics. And now they are even testing Arena's Augments on ARAM. And of course, besides Wild Rift, TFT also has its own experience with game modes. So Rajna, the product manager for TFT, chips in. TFT was originally a game mode. We just celebrated our 5 year anniversary thanks to all the players who have played over the past few years. When we reached the point where TFT began having game modes of its own, that felt like a major milestone. Of course, TFT got its own game modes like Chong's Treasure or Pangu's Party or even some of the smaller ones like Hyper Roll. That's why in Pangu's Party they just replaced the monsters with uh, cupcakes as an example. As TFT evolved, the constant has been TFT players' desire for new content. That's why we changed to three sets per year. And that's why we are investing in events to deliver more new novel experiences to players during each set. This constant evolution is one of the things TFT does best, and is what players want when they queue up for a game. And after this, we get to perhaps the most important part. A part titled A Balance Between PvP and PvE. Here they mention how both PvP and PvE have two totally separate values. As an example, the recent Spirit of Hearth Home event, which they call a storytelling mode here, really had one main goal, to tell a story. And in Wild Rift, as an example, the Ruination event had the exact same goal, to tell Kalista's story. 
To quote the post, these modes help bring the world of Runeterra to life. But with all PvE modes, you'll reach a cap on what the experience offers. After which, Soapbox continues. PvE is ultimately finite replayability. There's only so many enemies to code and story to tell. PvP is where you get into a more infinite replayability. You can't compare replayability metrics of something like League to a game like God of War. They are two fully different experiences, but both great in their own right. And this is something a lot of people should remember now. Every time Riot releases one of these game modes, a lot of people freak out. Because they believe that Riot will look at the metrics and they will see that it is not as popular as something like Summoner's Rift. And they will never release another game mode again. A lot of people thought that especially about Swarm. But here it is confirmed that Riot knows about this. They know you can't just look at the numbers and see what a success is. It is all a lot more complex and Cadmus adds on to that. When we think about a new game mode, it all depends on who the target is. Not all game modes are designed to support a super long engagement cycle and when they are, we design with that in mind. Arena is a great example of something recent that is aimed at being infinitely replayable, which is why we've seen it come back again this year. And as the post confirms, both Arena and something like the Spirit of Hearth Home were designed with their own experiences in mind. And they both became a success. Which means... Perhaps we should expect more inclined events, just like what Aurora got. And of course, since Swarm was somewhere in the middle with its replayability, that is also finite, the next part talks about that. We thought a lot about replayability for Swarm. We definitely wanted something you could play for hours and still have plenty to come back to complete. But at the end of the day, Swarm is designed to be, to a degree, completable. If you play it consistently, you'll get through all the levels, you'll get through all the achievements, and you'll kinda be done. But if it's a great 10 to 20 hours, that's okay. And if players really like this mode, there is a lot more we can do to increase replayability in a future version of it. Yes, that's right, there is a chance Swarm might be coming back. And looking at the hype around it, I'd say the chances are slightly higher. And so the post goes into its final part. Here August summarizes what the gameplay of Swarm is like, he essentially describes it as a totally different game using League's settings, and Cadmus gives us some last few words on Swarm. Not only is it providing that low stakes co-op way to engage with League of Legends, it's about making this summer event really shine. It is designed to be something like Odyssey or Star Guardian Invasion. These are moments that players remember for years. We want Swarm to be that same type of high-touch moment for players. After which we get one last line. And of course, that last line is also a teaser. We're happy with where Arena and Swarm landed, and the possibilities that open up for the future. At the same time, we are still heimerdingering away, creating future experiences that aim to be new, novel and hopefully fun. You see, they are bringing up Heimerdinger again. And since they have done it twice now, I would expect something to come for Arcane. But this is the news about the game modes. Long story short, Riot is happy with how it's being handled. And so far, the new game modes can be considered successes. So people should stop worrying about Riot not bringing things back. Because even if it's not as big as the other game modes, Riot knows about the hype. Everything is fine, Riot is having a blast making these, and they know the players are enjoying it. And if there is one thing you should take away from this, it is that we are definitely getting something for Arcane. And I'm gonna be very disappointed if the T-Hex is not present. <laughs> <laughs>